Welcome to the Cool Explorations podcast and radio program with your host, Tony Peters. I hope you'll enjoy today's segment. Yeah, well, and they, and they spoke out and uh, our government, uh, Trudeau, said that, that he had a great conversation with the with, with the leaders and stuff. And then uh, they talked to some of the leaders and the leaders were like, it wasn't a conversation. We were told this was happening. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> that, well, that's and, not and a, by the way, we're... discussion. <laughs> <laughs> no, we've had 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 big discussions here, and I think maybe you have in Canada as well. We've had big big discussions here about um, Indian related mascots uh, when it comes yeah. to uh, uh, sports teams. Um, you know uh, <laughs> the the wa- the Washington Redskins, for example. I mean, there, yeah, there was a very similar situation. Yeah, we talked to Indians, and this was, and it turns out that not only did an Indian design the logo and and incur and, and an Indian culture designed it and encouraged it, and it was an honor to the to the uh, uh, principled strength of Indians in protecting themselves and being warriors. Um, but we still take it away because of some body's unique yeah. political perspective yeah. and something that they want to use for other purposes it's not to protect it's, the it's, yeah, u- it's, crazy. it's usually something white people ha- have have viewed a, it must be offensive to them uh and so we want to change it they did that in our local baseball team too we were the swift current indians and it got changed to 57s because that's when they started the thing but um, it, it yeah. was not started out to be disrespectful it was actually started out to be respectful uh but yeah so that that's something we definitely need to to pay attention to and yeah. that kind of takes us into the question of what was it like for you being a christian in that political setting how hard was that for you hard well um uh it, it, it could be challenging in this sense it wasn't hard for me personally like i was determined i knew what i wanted to be and do and i made a decision that i was not going to cross moral lines in every way that depended upon me, if I could avoid it. Um, but what the challenge is, is that if you're going to do things the right way, you have to be better. You have to be better than your competition. So I did not do things at any cost, but I did everything that I had that I could do to win. One of the challenges that comes with that is that other Christians get offended when you do the right thing. I had just recently just happened recently i had a personal friend from my college campus ministry and we many of our friends there we've had zoom calls with over the last three or so years half of us are in the united states the other half are in asia we do this on a friday or saturday and we try to time it so it's someone's morning while someone's evening and you know it's it's not too late or too early well in some of these conversations we would talk about politics and one of the people there got very offended by me because I asserted the necessity, many of the necessities that I assert to you right now. And he had gotten offended by it. And it was interesting. He messaged me privately and he said, you know, and this was like two years ago and I didn't know all of this. I knew he had unfriended me on Facebook, but he hadn't expressed his disgust with me uh, over pressing some of the issues that we're talking about today. There are Christians that are offended by this and, and this lifestyle and this way of doing things. But I, I have to say, um, that also is, is a real challenge being a Christian in politics because Christians don't understand the necessity of fighting these battles. And by the way, Romans 13 is totally thrown out of context. This, this, um, uh, uh, requirement to honor the magistrate that is there in Romans 13, very real. And we should take it seriously. Here's a, a little interesting factoid. Your elected representatives, whether congressmen here in the United States or MPs, there in Canada don't deserve that kind of respect. I mean, they deserve the respect of human beings, obviously. I'm not saying that we should disrespect them at, on a human level, but in terms of that special respect that's discussed in Romans 13, that's not for legislators. You should be quite disrespectful of them when they ignore your fundamental constitutional principles or your fundamental human rights document that you have in Canada, because if they're ignoring it, they are breaking faith with you, and they should be called out for it. That's hard sometimes for Christians to process, in part because of a misunderstanding of Romans 13. So I would say the most difficult problem I ever had being a Christian in politics was with Christians. With non-Christians, I don't treat them as, oh, that's you people, and I happen to be a Christian, like I'm special. Well, what's what's so special about me? 
like I'm a human being subject potentially to sin as every other human being in the world. That's the nature of the situation we're in after, after the fall of Adam and Eve. Um, so I don't treat them any differently. I'm willing to work with non-Christians, obviously, because they're just human beings like me working under the same process. And so there's not some distinctive between you and me or whatever. Um, I, I don't tend to have those sorts of problems. I, I mean, other than disagreements on this or that political point. So those are the real challenges. And, uh, and, I, and because of those experiences is why I'm convinced that Christians need to radically transform how they approach our culture and politics. You better get involved. I say this very clearly. Uh, we have homosexual marriage in the United States and now other places, not because of the homosexual activists. We have it because of Christians. Christians suck at marriage in the West. Our divorce rates are just as high. Yep. Of course, when you go a little further beyond only the marriage bed, uh, our, um, our abortion rates are about the same as the culture. Like what's the distinctive? The distinctive should be people honoring God's word and respecting his laws and walking in the commands that were given in both the old and the new Testament. And we don't do that. We don't take that seriously. Like God's standard of righteousness that we should be walking in the fear of God. His standard of righteousness is such that he shows us leniency and mercy because of his desire to sustain us and to draw us to himself that we might walk with him. But that does not change his sense of justice. Don't ask God for justice. You don't want justice. <laughs> you do not want justice from God. You that's want like, his mercy. That's like asking God for patience. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, so what we see uh, in the world is, is insanity right now. Just absolute definition of insanity in terms of uh, a lot of the active activist groups that we see out there um particularly we see like antifa we see blm uh and we see um, the trans movement uh which even by the way has created a split in the pride movement the a lot of the lesbian gay community does not want anything to do yeah. with the trans movement and they're That's told correct. they're they are literally told um drop the f-bomb and then get out uh, of the movement and it's like how what right do you have to tell them to get out of the movement if you absconded it you've taken it over so now that the lesbian and gay community is like no you guys have made this about sexualizing children and not about what it was for us where we made an adult decision yeah and uh so they've made them look bad and we see that split and as christians we need to be taking a firm stance on this position as well and standing up for our children um and standing up for our fundamental rights not to be exposed to that stuff in canada we have now pride season instead of just a pride day or pride week or pride month it's now pride season yeah. um and so what has happened is i think too many christians have sat back and just let it happen we, they've said nothing they just think oh i don't want to be disrespectful and it's like it's not a matter of being disrespectful it's like you're standing up for your christian beliefs your christian faith um what can christians do to maybe make a bigger impact on this and actually do an effective job of protecting their family and the family unit. Well, first of all, um, b before getting into issues like policy, which I'm always want to discuss and, and I think is relevant to, to the answer of your question on a personal basis, uh, I, I would, and I know that your homeschool laws vary there, but, uh, to ours in some ways, but I would homeschool when at all possible train your children that way. Everyone that is capable of doing it should do it. Find alternatives to the government schools. I think that's important. And of course, you you made mention of a circumstance where even in a Catholic school, there are certain requirements, but but still that's a that's a net better place to be. Our actual Catholic school here in Sufcurrent is worse than our residential schools in terms yeah. of the stuff they're bringing in. And, and, and by the way, I know some of your government schools are going to be okay. I get that. So, you know, you got to make a good judgment, but you have to be deeply involved with your family. The number one thing that Christians can do to protect themselves is to get a Christian worldview and then to example it and live by it in the family. That Christian worldview should lead husbands and wives to pray for one another, to do devotionals together. That same thing should trickle down into the children. Though That training and teaching should be there with those children. Um, you should entirely divorce yourself from mentally assenting to the culture as a way of compromise with the culture. 
It doesn't mean you have to be a jerk or nasty towards people who think differently, but it means you have to think differently. And that gets informed by the revelation of scripture. Um, you know, for good or for bad, the Christian religion is a revealed religion. And so that revelation comes through the scripture. I think you also need to learn the the basic principles of logical thinking. Um, you need to seriously consider um, how, you know, the way, well, the way any truth is communicated is through the brain and through the external expressions and assertions of those statements that gets processed in here. We are told to, to renew our mind with the washing of the water of the word, but you can't wash with the water of the word without understanding the uh, premises and precepts that are related there that requires the brain and it requires action. So I think first and foremost, you protect yourself by actually having an understanding of the word. And this goes back to Micah 6, 8, like you're going to have to, in humiliation, most Christians reorient your brain to learn truth. There's, we have a problem of preaching uh, ministry and teaching ministry in the church. When I say the church, I mean the church, the visible church. My bet, if I go like this with my thumb and, and look at the church and kind of guess, you know, I think maybe 30% of churches really teach the truth by the word according to God's way and plan. There, there are churches are lot, that don't even go to the Bible at all in right? service. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. We have a couple of churches like that in, in town here that I've heard people go and they're, they don't open the Bible at all. Yeah. And I'm like, that is a fundamental problem. And I was even looking up a church for someone who wants to be a guest on the podcast and their church does not even have a doctrine, like a doctrinal statement or anything. And I'm like, that's not a church if it doesn't have a doctrinal statement. It's just a gathering of people. <laughs> yeah. Well, and and by the way, we I'm getting into theological issues and church governance issues when I talk about the fact we need to be a creedal church again. Like the main creeds are important to understand. Just let just start with the Apostles' Creed, which is a fairly simple statement. Um, if if you don't have an understanding of what that means, which but it, it's not the the apostles put it together. It's just called the Apostles' Creed because it it's the transmission up to the uh, uh, fourth century of what was required of every believer if they wanted admission into a church, that you had to accept these fundamental truths. Well, we need to accept these fundamental truths yeah. again in the church. If you don't have a creedal stance, then you have nothing. Any church that can't at least put on their website, if they haven't formed, if they haven't put together a formal creed of, of a statement of belief, then it, then take a look at the Apostles' Creed. And, and if you believe that, which by the way, I think is a distinction between whether you're a Christian church or just some religious organization, you're not even of Christ if you can't accept the Apostles' Creed. But if you haven't produced a formal creed, then put the Apostles' Creed on there. That should be your creed. That should drive your understanding of fundamental truth. And of course, it can go much deeper than that. I think I think every family should take the Westminster Shorter Catechism and work together through it as a family. Of course, obviously, fundamentally being at the Word. But the reason I bring in that catechism as, as a means to do it is it's a formally set, stated imperfect it was it's it's a consolidation of biblical truth but it's a pretty darn good one and as a formal structure just to remember the important things it it deals with theology anthropology and ethical and moral behavior it's all there in the westminster shorter catechism every child should be trained in that my children were and i think it's it's really important for for uh protection but this is how you protect yourself is with understanding. That's that's what Proverbs teaches us in Proverbs 1. You know, with all your knowledge, get understanding. You need understanding and, and obviously spiritual understanding. So you have to found it in spiritually solid things that are aligned with the word of God. That's the greatest protection for any family. Beyond that, every parent should hold their school districts, school boards, whatever formal structure guides that educational institution, they should be involved in every meeting there. They should demand transparency from them. You've got to actively do this to protect your children because they are, their worldview is going to be developed in the six or so hours a day that they are in that educational institution and not with you. So yeah. you need to make sure that you understand that. This is a serious requirement for Christian parents. They should be deeply involved in the education of their children. And that's why I suggest homeschooling, because that's the best way to be deeply involved. And again, you're in Canada. That's a little bit different issue than it is in the United States, but it is something to do.
you need to t- undertake that yeah. in some form or fashion. Yeah. Our area does not have a homeschooling pods. Um, like a lot of areas are forming. I wish our city did have homeschooling pods because that's definitely where our kids would go. Um, cause yeah, otherwise where our kids are in residential school, cause it's just not yeah. feasible for us. But, uh, that is something that that's definitely, uh, we've said if they really start pushing a lot of the, uh, pride stuff onto our kids in school, uh, and we do ask our kids what they learn uh, in school every day. We, we ask them. Uh, and if they do, then we are going to be pulling our kids from the school and they're going to be, uh, switching probably to remote learning so that we can actually monitor a lot more closely what yeah. they're, they're being thrown, what's being thrown their way. Uh, just because, yeah, it's, it's bad. We've even told our, our kids, um, certain films that they watch at school where like you have my permission to just draw during that whole film and not pay attention yeah. um, to that. And we've told them, you know, if, if your teacher's asking you to do something you feel uncomfortable with, that goes against our biblical beliefs. You have my permission to go out of the classroom and call me. Yep. And uh, I, I know the principal of their school very well. So uh, the principal and I would be having a, a very good discussion <laughs> on what's allowed and what's not allowed in, in the, in the schools. So I think that taking that interest is definitely something that that we need to do is is ask your kids like what what did you learn in school today, um, right? You know, and if they're having issues with a certain teacher, why are you having issues with this teacher? Um, my son is really really good because he's smart, so he picks up on a lot of stuff. But m- my daughter, she she's smart, but she does she is a little bit more um, easily influenced. So we just have to watch her a lot more closely than what we watch my watch my son because my son is is smart enough that he's just like well prove it when it, when it comes to things or. Uh, he studies things on his own. So he's, he knows, and he's corrected his teachers and we've got him in trouble for doing it publicly. Um, cause he's gotten in trouble for doing it publicly, but he hasn't been wrong. The teacher has been wrong and he's actually had the articles and everything to prove it. But, but he, uh, it's just don't do it publicly. Uh, <laughs> cause otherwise, yeah, then the teacher is going to get offended and sent you to the principal's office. <laughs> yeah. You know, uh, Paul said as much as is relying upon you and I'm quickly paraphrasing, be at peace with all men. So, you know, you don't, you don't, we don't have to be nasty and jerks, but I will tell you this, we're coming more and more to this place where some forms of civil disobedience are going to be necessary. Every time that they tell you that you, that you must follow some precept that clearly um, puts you at odds with God's commands, we are required as a matter of moral behavior to not submit to that. And that's going to happen more and more when we oh, meet yeah. culture, particularly in the schools. The other thing is this, um, every, like you, you talk about groups of Christian families that, you know, every geographical area should have and develop, in my opinion, uh, groups of parents that get together, that talk together, that meet regularly to discuss what they're observing in the schools, and then to organize little platoons of action when necessary to take on the schools and to go and force and when I say in force, I don't mean in military force <laughs> to go in numbers to to confront their school systems when necessary and to tell them that they demand something different. Because by and large, in both of our countries, uh, those uh, those institutions are responsible to the government, which means they're responsible to us who vote for those who manage that government. And we should take action every single time as Christians we should gather together, not just within your church, but even outside your church. Sometimes um, it may be large enough in your church, but it, it, you know, it just should be Christians in an area should get together, find some formal way to get together on a regular basis and talk through these issues and work through them. Young parents should be doing this because it's, it's necessary. We, we have a nuclear society. Everyone's siphoned off from everyone else. Well, the reason for gathering as Christians is to support and help one another, to encourage one another, for reproof, rebuke, and exhortation of the brethren, for encouraging with psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. This is all a group activity, and we need to obviously need to do it formally with the church that we're involved with. That's God's command. But we could also do this with one another in these trying times. Yeah, for sure. And I think that that leads us into the the, the, the wrap-up question, which is uh, what should Christians be specifically looking out for and preparing themselves for going forward uh, so that they can be ready uh, when these things, uh, when these things happen uh, and know how to take action. Well, so I would say that every Christian parent or otherwise of whatever age should be prepared for the potential onslaught that could be coming our way in the West. 
It's beginning to happen. We understand through the Twitter files, which I've, I've been involved with the, in, at, in various levels with the largest Twitter group out there that's had Elon Musk on and others. And we were the ones that everyone was going to as those Twitter files were being um, laid out. Mario Nafal is the guy who had put that together. I think he was speaking uh, yesterday as well. I think he had a, a speaking <clears throat> thing. Yeah. Well, there's a space every, almost every day with okay. him and I'm involved with most of them, but anyway, and, and many of their major speakers, not all, but many of them I've, I've helped bring just because of my connections and that's why I got involved. But anyway, uh, when we've laid out the Twitter files, you find out here in the United States and it's happening elsewhere too, that governments are directly connecting with sources of information. And in this case, a social media platform to try to cater speech. And we're, we understand that the onslaught is coming in any way that they can. They want to control you. They want to shut down what you think. Well, you're going to have to take courage because you are going to find yourself potentially in situations like, what, what was that pastor that was so famous up in Canada when they kept meeting? Um, anyway, I actually the, the, don't know what his name I, was. His name I know exactly who you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. He was, yeah. He was a, a, a Polish native at one time. But uh, that's the kind of stuff that's coming, maybe in small measures, maybe in small incremental times, but it may become bigger. You're going to have to have the courage to stand up. You need to do it founded on the word of God. You need to understand his principles and uh, you need to expect of your church that they are founded on the word of God. If they're not, you need to find another church. If they're not teaching the church, if they don't have a Christian worldview, you need to move along. And find someplace else. It's your responsibility as a Christian. It, you know, you you've got to be be a place where you can be fed. But in those efforts, you need to get your mind clear. You need to keep your heart devoted to Christ in supreme humility. It requires humility and the fear of God. The fear of God is this: I'm a sinner deserving of death. You remember the story. Uh, where some of his disciples had come to him and talked about the blood that uh, Pilate mingled in the synagogue and then the falling down of that tower, which ki- killed so many people. And, and they said, you know, what about all this? And what was Jesus response? Repent or else you too will like likewise perish. I mean, that's a statement yeah. of where the fear of God should be founded. We live with Christ. If we're believers because of God's grace toward us, in salvation. He brought us to him. No man comes unless the Holy Spirit draws. So now that you've been drawn, you need to keep anchoring yourself in humility before God, but you need to desire to understand more of him. And then lastly, I think, and this is hard for Christians to accept, but I think they're realizing it more and more as time goes on. You actually need to be involved in your culture and politics. And that means you will be ostracized from time to time. But it also means when you do it in large enough numbers, that you can have a positive influence that can happen. Listen, I know that there are some people that have are different sides of the issue with the Canadian truckers that went to Ottawa. And, and I guarantee you that some of those people, some of those truckers did things that possibly weren't very appropriate, just like, you know, in a maybe slightly worse situation, January 6th, uh, 2021 here in the United States. But the vast majority of the people in both of those events that were involved were people who cared about their country and rightly stood up to talk about what their concerns were. You have a right to stand up for what you believe in and you should, you need to found those beliefs on truth. But once you have done that well and continue to do it, then you have to assert them publicly. We have freedom in both these countries to do that. And you should undertake the use of that freedom for its purposes. Don't sit back and cower. It will be tough from time to time. And for some people, Everybody should do it, and the numbers are there to have positive effect. Be respectful, be honorable, but be courageous and purposeful. It is okay to call out people who are acting wrongly. And I want everyone to re-investigate Romans 13. You are not required that type of respect for legislators. It's slightly different in a parliamentary system because you form governments out of the parliament. But, But nonetheless, you have a certain a set of executive authority in that parliamentary system. And the rest is just legislative authority because they don't have uh, governmental positions, even though they vote for the government from the foundation of their party. But in in the United States, we we have a a separation of the executive and the legislative branch. Your legislators deserve human respect, 
they do not re- deserve the respect of Romans 13. That's designed for magistrates, which means people in, in administrative authority. And we do need to give them respect. But again, even in that case, if they're telling you to do something that is not scriptural, it is your duty and obligation as a believer to go against that. That sometimes in severe circumstances can cause major disruption to your life. But you know what? God stands behind you when you are acting within his commands. And that is very purposeful. Read first Peter again. You know, he was addressing believers in those areas of Asia minor that were undergoing severe persecution. And you, it may come to that in, in right now in certain circumstances, but not everywhere. But nonetheless, we are still called to stand not by doing cruel things to others, as Peter pointed out in first Peter, I think chapter two, But if you're doing it for conscience sake and because of God's commands, then you are blessed. So we're going to have to step up and do that in these free societies while we still have a chance. Yeah, we need to stand up and make sure our voices are heard and that the legislation can't just completely ignore Christian values or our voices. They call us the fringe minority, but... Uh, if if I'm the fringe minority and uh, and there's there's so many of us out there, then uh, I uh, I'll gladly take the fringe minority uh, label that Trudeau likes to place on us. <laughs> and 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 in and, and, and candor, uh, Justin Trudeau's viewpoint is a fringe minority, and yeah. as he has, his way of thinking is aligned with communist China. I mean, he said that very publicly and openly. That's and the, the, that's the model forum. for him. Yeah, World Economic Forum. And yeah. World Economic Forum. Yeah. I'm, I'm I'm more worried about his alignment with commun- the ideals of communist China than I am the WEF, even as bad as that is, because that's an actual system that's implemented and operating right now and can be mirrored. The World Economic Forum expresses truly corrupt, but mere ideals. They're corrupt ideals, but they're mere, mere ideals right now. China has them in operation, and we we have systems in the West that are trying to implement that and use it as a model very seriously. And it's a corrupt way of thinking. And Trudeau fits in that. And he should be opposed in every way. You should get your elected representatives out of office if they're not willing to stand with you, including the the proclaimed Christian ones. Because if they're not following the basic principles of the rule of law, then they are antinomials, which is a serious uh, theological term. They don't believe in law. And they are therefore not acting in a Christian manner. And they should be told that when they're doing it. This is a very serious issue. We need to be very serious about it. 100%. 100%. Well, thank you for coming on. It's been a real pleasure. Uh, I'm sure we'll have more of these conversations because I love these talks. (laughs) Great. I'm glad to do it. And um, thanks for inviting me on. I appreciate you giving me the time to talk to with you. I truly enjoyed it. Thank you for listening to the Cool Explorations podcast and radio program. I hope that you've enjoyed today's segment. And uh, I hope that you'll consider supporting us at... uh, Cool Explorations on Patreon, as well as uh, you can shoot me an email at tpeter745 at gmail.com if you'd like to support in other ways other than Patreon. <laughs>